Okay, uh, so let's start. Um, and my task is now to bridge from uh, a kind of uh, research perspective first and a microeconomic perspective, which was the starting point of Professor Brenn. So to look from the company side and uh, the value uh, to uh, official statistics, which is at the other end of the scale, because we are operating at the macroeconomic uh, level. And the question here is, can we close that micro-macro gap uh, in terms of measurement? Is it uh, possible for us to have a better um, profiling of markets, of economies, of societies in, in uh, times of uh, globalization as uh, presented uh, uh, by Louis Brand. So, oops, now what is going on here? Uh, oh, no, 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 I am, uh, yes, I have to simply to click, I think. Yeah, 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 okay, sorry. Yes, so, here we go. So, uh, the first question is, what is the system uh, of official statistics and what kind of projection do we use? And uh, in official statistics we use a kind of flat projection of the world. Of course we know that the world is not flat, but we do as if it was uh, flat. And uh, we uh, use the term uh, as a starting point, national accounts. Still we use the term national accounts, so this already reflects where we are in our way of thinking. So the system that we uh, mirror in our tables is a rectangular system based on one uh, period in one nation, basically. And national accounts uh, have, of course, stocks and flows, and we adjust the more or less this rectangle by uh, time-wise uh, to take into account, let's say, cross uh, time flows, which is depreciation and investment, and cross border flows by exports and imports. It's as simple as that. So this is national accounts. Uh, but of course, the SMA 2010 is a book like uh, like this. So uh, even a rectangular flat projection can be quite, quite complicated. Now. Um, if you look a little bit more in depth into how we uh, calculate, then the basic figure is the gross domestic product and of course prices. This is the main line in, in official economic statistics. And there are in all three domains, in gross, in domestic and in products, there are new elements upcoming which are under debate uh, in, the, in the statistical systems of the world. So firstly, we want to look at net domestic or net uh, uh, incomes and we want to take into account the depreci depreciation of other capitals than the produced capital, for example to take into account environmental capital, expenditures uh, and depreciation of natural capital. But here in this seminar we are looking at the second to change from a domestic viewpoint to a global viewpoint and the question is how to do this. And, uh, of course, we have to understand that the, uh, the business and trade statistics that we currently have and that we produce in official statistics in more or less, uh, in, in all uh, systems uh, of official statistics are organized with very much a focus on, on an orientation given by national accounts. Uh, and this is uh, then very important to understand uh, for, for the next steps. Uh, because the, uh, the business and trade statistics, for the time being, they are organized uh, in boxes. So we have a separate box for trade in goods statistics, we have a separate box for transport statistics, a separate box for business statistics, predominantly for the manufacturing industry. We have not much on services, I will come back uh, to this. And, and, and so we have a lot of silos of statistical production and uh, it's very uh, difficult for the time being to get uh, the points connected uh, between these different silos. Uh, what we currently uh, have in mind, and I already mentioned this in my introduction, is in particular to have an integrated system between trade and business statistics. I think this is the, the main uh, focus of what we are currently uh, developing in, in Europe. 
Uh, of course, then there are other components which are not that relevant for the um, for the for the seminar today, like environment. But uh, FDI, uh, business and trade statistics are certainly very much uh, in the focus of today. Um, we have missing pieces also um, in uh, in the stovepipes. So not everything is perfect uh, in uh, business statistics. So we have or in trade statistics. I will come back later to this. Trade statistics is very much trade statistics in goods, uh, and it's not much uh, trade statistics in services. And so there is a, a clear uh, imbalance uh, in the development of these, uh, of these uh, uh, elements. And of course there are blind spots also on the map uh, for a analysis at global level. Uh, I think I can skip this a little bit because this was very much elaborated by uh, Professor Brennan. Uh, what is important for us to understand uh, if we want to look at the future of official statistics in trade and business to understand where we are coming from. And uh, unfortunately a famous official statisti statistician has passed away in February. Uh, this was Alain de Roisière uh, from INSEE France. And he has written a very uh, interesting book uh, about the uh, policy of large numbers. In the, that's the English title. Uh, the policy of large numbers. And what um, Alain said is, if you look back to the 18th and 19th century, you understand that official statistics always was in co-development with the development of the national state. And here you can see what has happened in the 18th century and uh, that in the 19th century, the first uh, uh, offices for statistics were opened at the beginning of the 19th century in Prussia and Austria, France, Sweden, and so forth. And this was together with the post -Na uh, Bonaparte Napoleon time where the national state, the modern national state, was more or less created. Now, um, why do I go back so far? Uh, there are two interesting things. Uh, the first is, uh, oh, you had a nice pointer, uh, okay, the, the, first, the first one is this, trade statistics always belonged already in the 18th century to the basic statistical pillars of a statistical system at that time. It was demography, trade, agriculture and industry, basically. But trade statistic in that period of time, it was very much driven by the interest of the sovereign on security. Yeah. So it was import of iron, it was import of corn. The king at this time was not very much interested in export. It was the import, how can I feed my population? And of course the king was interested in demography, where are my, the next generation of soldiers are coming from. Yeah. So that's basically uh, where official statistics started, and even the word statistics is linked to the word state. So statistics always was the, let's say, empirical, empirical arm of the state. So the, the first thing is trade statistics is one of the oldest statistics uh, that we know. That can be an advantage, can also be a blocking factor. Uh, and I think we, for the time being we have both. Uh, the second observation which is interesting is now we are in a period of time where the national state and the role of the national state is changing. Particularly in the European Union, those who are living in the Union uh, know how difficult it is to imagine what will happen with the Union. What is the future of the, the project of the European Union? But what we can assume is that the European Union uh, has a role to play also in the future and that for this role we need uh, to go beyond let's say, national profiles of national uh, economies. So we have to co-develop official statistics uh, with this, let's say, new quasi-state of the European Union, which is not yet a federation or so, but uh, we are on a way to, uh, let's say, a kind of form that we all don't know yet. Okay, so let's see what will happen in the future. Uh, it's also interesting to look at the, the last uh, century, um, Eurostat was uh, founded, uh, let's say, or the predecessor of the embryo of Eurostat was born in 1953. We celebrated the 60 years birthday a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and interestingly, 
the, the first statistics which were produced by Eurostat were uh, steel and coal, because the European Union started with steel and coal, with trade. Uh, and uh, so it's all about um, uh, international cooperation, trade, and and and. Um, and now in this uh, sequence, we are developing more and more a modern view on how to reflect in a statistical world uh, what is going on on markets and in uh, societies. Uh, well, first, and we, we will have now some snapshots for the different components. First, we look at international trade. Oops. Yeah. Again, here we are. Uh, and of course, there is a speciality if we look at uh, the trade exports in goods, uh, because here we have this huge amount of the intra EU trade. So, if you want to compare um, the development of the EU with China, US, and, and so forth, it's of course important to extract the blue part and only to look at EU extra uh, trade in goods. That's quite easy. Um, we also know about all these uh, stories about mirror differences uh, that you can see here, which is disturbing, uh, and uh, unfortunately uh, we, of course, dream that we can solve it in cooperation with our colleagues in China, in the US, and so forth. But so far, um, I think we have not succeeded in really sorting out all these kind of uh, noise in the statistical tables. Oops. Here. Yeah, okay. Then, of course, um, it's very important also to look, and this uh, is implicitly uh, what uh, Professor Brennan has said, uh, is it, uh, what is the kind of employment which is embedded uh, in, in uh, uh, exports? Is export only uh, good for the exporter, or is it creating employment beyond the firm that is, um, that is exporting? And you can see here two lines, the, the, the purple one or violet one is the, uh, the employment and the other one is the income created uh, behind extra EU exports. Uh, interestingly, the employment is not developing in a positive sense, but the income is, is, is positively developing. Uh, but what is also interesting is how we calculated this. Uh, because this is not... Uh, an easy task. You have to have a good input-output table for that. Uh, so, uh, the first time I now mention a statistical tool, behind that is an input-output analysis, uh, which is very important for the, for the future, and uh, it's also mentioned in uh, Tim Sturgeon's uh, report. So, let's uh, uh, think a moment about how can we use national and particularly international input-output tables uh, for the purpose of such kind of analysis. And of course it's very important also to understand this embedded employment which is then linked also to outsourcing and global value chains. Uh, uh, we know all the arguments of the populist, particularly in, uh, in, in countries with a lot of crisis now, that they say uh, the, uh, the, the outsourcing or offshoring of work is destroying employment. And it's, I think it's very important that we statisticians can show uh, whether this is the case or whether this is not the case. And uh, this is just an example of that. Uh, the, of course, the, uh, the foreign content of export of goods was, is, is reflecting exactly what you have uh, demonstrated for a, a number of companies and diggers and uh, uh, cars and, and whatever. But here you can see more or less the components, the red part, at the, uh, is uh, the growth of that uh, since 1995. Oops. Um, now, uh, if we come to the money part of it, uh, then we look at the foreign direct DFDI flows. Um, and here you can see the uh, development of, for, of FDI uh, extra EU, intra EU, and the world, which is the sum of all of this. So we have had a dip after the crisis in 2008 9, 
hoping and let's see what will happen now after 2011. Um, this is the main destination. The US is the main destination of EU FDIs. Um, then comes, what is it, uh, Switzerland, uh, Brazil, um, China, uh, and then finally Canada and India. I just give you some snapshots of what we have got uh, so far in the statistical collection box. Um, this is the turnover, and the, you can see that the US is, the, uh, is more or less the, uh, the main recipient uh, of, of turnover from the EU countries in foreign trade. Uh, now, an important part, which is the trade in services. Trade in services uh, start, of course, before we go to the uh, export of services or import of services, we have to look domestically into the share of services vis-à-vis -vis the manufacturing industry. And here you see two lines uh, which are, of course, correct. They are measured in correct ways. But the, my question to you is, what can we, uh, how can we interpret that? And we have heard from Professor Brennan that reorganization and new organizational models uh, come with a com complete uh, new form of uh, bundles of functions. And I'm using the term of, of Tim Sturgeon in his report, bundles of functions. So can we really compare 1970 with 2009? Is it a real growth of the services? Or is it just a statistical uh, uh, swap? between two lines, because we are still measuring uh, the industry and the services based on the same unit, the statistical unit. We apply to this unit the statistical classification in uh, Europe, this is the NACE classification. Uh, and of course, if you have an outsourcing, uh, then you outsource from the uh, decreasing line to the increasing line. So you simply have to, uh, uh, to a, a good proportion of this uh, let's say graph you have an effect of, uh, let's say, uh, or reorganization of the industry. So one must not interpret this as a decrease of the importance of the industry. In the contrary, I think uh, we have to look this to, to, to this um, with the question, do we have the right units? Uh, is it the right way we statisticians apply the classifications to units? Or do we give a wrong impression? And I think we, we give a wrong impression. Uh, well, this is uh, the growth, US plus 18, EU plus 20, uh, India plus 18, this is the share of value added of services in total economy. But this is services, predominantly services for <coughs> the industry to produce. It is not, uh, not only uh, services for in the health sector or in uh, education. Or in, uh, this is outsourced services to a very high degree. Uh, when it comes to the uh, international trade in services, it's, I would say it's even worse, the statistical picture that we get. If you compare uh, the eight-digit nomenclature uh, that we currently use in trade in goods and the very short uh, nomenclature that we use in trade with services, uh, then you see this is totally out of balance. So we have to invest uh, into getting the trade in services uh, more or less up to the level of the trade in goods. Uh, the reasoning behind is of course history. Because in the past we were only interested in industry and trade in goods was uh, a sufficient proxy for the uh, trade in total. But this is no longer the case. If you want to have a good picture of uh, external relationships, then we have to reflect on integrating uh, the services. Uh, as, by the way, we also have to uh, think better about reflecting services in all our statistical compartments. So service prices, uh, for, for us in the Eurostat, the question is, uh, we, we all know that we have a PRODCOM, which is the measurement of the production. Do we need a kind of SERFCOM? Uh, so a, a current uh, a continuum of services. So all of these are questions which are reflected a little bit in these pictures. Um, by the way, we have used here the word export and imports of services. 
but uh, the tables would use other words. They would say, uh, yes, credit and debits uh, of services. Why? Because uh, trade in services is still part of the balance of payments regulation. So it's, it coming, it's coming from a different planet um, balance of payments. So, but we have to emancipate uh, trade in services so that this is a, uh, a statistics on its own right. So you see here in the, in the sequence of the pictures um, more or less the uh, steep development um, uh, particularly of the uh, uh, developing countries, and this is uh, what uh, Lewis already has uh, mentioned. Embodied services, uh, this is also reflecting what you have said. So manufacturing industry is, not only, is no longer only manufacturing industry. There is a, a big share uh, of embodied uh, the services which come along in a kind of business case uh, type of um, uh, organization of industries um, so that you see here the share of services related employees in the, in the manufacturing industry. Um, here you have a breakdown to countries. Uh, the highest share of service related employees in the UK. Uh, and then we have uh, Estonia, Portugal and uh, Poland uh, with a lower share and uh, you see the points for 2000 and the development since then with the blue uh, histogram uh, pillars uh, uh, until 2008. So different kind of development in different EU member states. Uh, last, but not lay, uh, last but not least, in, in this development over the years, uh, we are now entering into the measurement of global value chains. There are two perspectives uh, to discuss this. The first is to have one global value, value chain survey. The other is to have a kind of box with tools which allow us to analyze uh, the global value chain phenomenon. And I think this is the perspective that is taken by, by uh, Tim Sturgeon. Nevertheless, I think it is important also to have some new survey components. Uh, and this is, for example, the outsourcing component, uh, which um, we have now started to integrate uh, also into the portfolio of European statistics. So, as uh, was expectable, you see here uh, that Ireland uh, has a very high share of domestic outsourcing and also uh, in total is the, uh, the country with the highest outsourcing uh, share. Um, and then at the other end we have, uh, for example, surprisingly uh, France. The question for us is how to interpret this. Is this a question of the size of the country? Is this a question of culture? Uh, so we still have to learn uh, how to improve these first steps in statistical measurement and how in cooperation with uh, academic uh, colleagues, with researchers, but also those who are producing, let's say, uh, or preparing uh, policy decisions, we have to uh, uh, in improve these new statistical tools. <coughs> um, here we have the share of enterprises uh, who are, which are outsourcing internationally um, and there Denmark has the highest share, uh, Romania uh, and uh, Lithuania uh, at, at the other end. Um, I must say that here um, we are not uh, representative in terms of capturing all 27 member states. That's, that's a pity and uh, until now this was a kind of uh, non-obligatory survey so we are starting with experimental statistics uh, but I think it, it shows already into a direction that we would like to uh, continue to be developed. Um, the number of enterprises outsourcing internationally by destination uh, is also quite an interesting um, uh, picture. So you, you see here the comparison between EU15 uh, on the left side, India, China, the rest of Europe and so forth. Um, and then you see a, comp a comparison between the manufacturing industry and uh, other sectors, particularly the service industry. 
uh, and a different chair, uh, for example, in Slovakia, uh, you see that uh, the uh, here that uh, the, uh, the the service sector is is much more on the side of outsourcing, whereas Denmark is the other way around. Uh, Finland, uh, Belgium, there you have the manufacturing industry uh, with a lot of outsourcing. What are the challenges? To conclude, um, as I said, we have a long tradition. 200 years more or less tradition to observe the uh, economies. Uh, we do this in uh, boxes, national boxes, and within the national boxes we have boxes of statistics. Um, so this is a lot of data on trade, on services, international sourcing, meanwhile, uh, and other things. Uh, but we have to cover some of the, the blind spots. Uh, some of them need to be developed from scratch and uh, for others we need to adjust them uh, and here the example was made to adjust the uh, trade and services statistics over time. Linkage of data sources. Uh, I think that's the catch word. We have to integrate uh, all these boxes and I think this is one of the messages I have uh, seen quite clearly coming out from Tim Sturgeon's report. Uh, make the, the points um, linkable so that uh, researchers can analyze uh, the data in connection. Uh, so um, integrate in particular trade and business statistics so that you can have a full understanding what is going on with one company, one enterprise, uh, how far is this company uh, part of the global value chain as a recipient uh, of input or as as a provider of uh, output to others. Um, and for that, of course, uh, we statisticians would very much profit from an identifier uh, for companies uh, so that we can uh, not only use the uh, administrative data out there, tax data for example, but that we can also match uh, different uh, survey uh, outcomes from trade statistics, from business statistics short-term business statistics, structural business statistics, and all of this, of course, is very meaningful when it comes to um, the, the value for uh, research and analysis. A lot of initiatives are underway to develop uh, a statistical picture on global value chains. Profiling of multinational enterprises is a big work. Uh, we are um, developing a European business register uh, we are developing a single market a statistical model with, uh, how we call it in uh, Europe, a kind of data sharing approach. Of course, I'm fully aware that I am in a country which is a Euro member, but not a data, uh, yes, a, a people sharing uh, member. So I was surprised to, uh, to, ask, uh, to be asked uh, to show my uh, passport yesterday, but maybe Ireland can support the data sharing at least. Um, and, uh, well, finally, I am looking forward now to, be, uh, to see the outcomes uh, of the report. And uh, if we challenge, if we sum up all the challenges, then the most important part is to bring the pieces together uh, and uh, to have a close relationship uh, between the, the puzzle makers and, of course, that's what we are currently doing today. Listen to the academics. Thank you very much.